we are living in such dire circumstances here in the wealthiest nation on earth that like other countries have been able to manage all this shit and we look at that and go nah nah dude that's crazy that will not happen that would never happen dude So here is what could be done. Livable apartments have become a luxury in many large cities. Vienna, however, has deliberately chosen a different path. For over By the way, this is directly a consequence of uh, uh, communists and socialists. I don't know what they're going to say, but like, yeah, no, it is literally communists and socialists that uh, created the structure that has uh, that has made it so that 65% of people living in Vienna live in public housing. It's not even a joke. It's, it is. For 100 years, we have considered affordable housing a public responsibility that is best met by an effective public housing sector. To understand Vienna's unique housing situation, you have to know its history. At the beginning of the 20th century, it had more than 2 million inhabitants, a larger population size than in the present day. At that time, about 300,000 people in the city had no access to decent living space. Vienna was reputed to be the European capital with the worst housing. As a result, the Social Democratic Viennese government made concerted efforts to improve living standards after World War I. The dogma was, apartments are not goods. Having one is a right. In 1923, the foundation for the first large residential construction program was laid. A new municipal city council decree foresaw the construction of 25,000 apartments within five years and another 30,000 from 1929 to 1933. Public housing projects were never limited to certain districts. They were implemented across Vienna, regardless of the social status of the area. Owing to this clear, long-standing policy, the social background of a person cannot be determined by their postal address. The most essential principles of the Austrian First Republic are still valid today. These include affordable, high-quality buildings, social cohesion, and a balanced social mix. As a result, social housing. City planning impacts people's lives. And if you have mixed income housing, like they're describing here, and everyone gets the same nice uh, housing uh, readily uh, available to them, you will have better social cohesion. It is a fundamental part of city building. Okay? It, yes, it is quite literally Soviet style. That's just how it works. It is, that is true. But that's how it works. When your neighbors are, are uh, from all different backgrounds, you become, uh, you have more social cohesion. This is how equal opportunity works, by the way. America will never do this, though, because they look at this and say, that's socialism, that's terrible. Has a long and successful tradition that has now lasted for more than 100 years. It is this continuity which is unique. Nowadays, Vienna, Austria's capital, is home to 1.9 million inhabitants. Along with New York and Geneva, it is home to the United Nations and other important global diplomatic organizations. It is the fifth largest capital in the European Union and the second largest city in the German-speaking world. Today, more than half of all Viennese live in subsidized apartments. These housing complexes are spread across the city ensuring a positive social mix in each district. Vienna is the fastest growing city in the German-speaking world. Although the growth of population slowed down in recent years, it is still expanding at around 10,000 people per year. And this high ratio is expected to continue over the next few years. Really, I'll be back. The pressure on the municipality to provide the population with attractive and affordable apartments in a healthy, safe and livable environment is huge. Hence, local government invests up to 400 million euros annually in housing construction and renovation of older buildings. Another 100 million euros is reserved for local residents who are unable to afford even subsidized rents. 
The subsidies are financed through federal taxes and the general income tax system. This funding through taxation creates a reliable basis for the planning of complex housing programs, which would be impossible under strictly market-dependent housing policies. The quota is regulated by a federal law and amounts to 0.5% of the gross income of employees and employers. On the basis of this tax, Vienna receives an annual amount of about 250 million euros for housing construction purposes from the federal state. Besides money, there are other important factors that help tenants sleep well at night. City dwellers enjoy a very strong tenancy law in Austria. Another essential factor is the Limited Profit Housing Act. This act provides the legal framework for all limited profit construction associations, whether organized as a cooperative or as a corporation. It defines not only the principles of the public good status, but also other issues, such as the handling of rents or the membership of a supervisory association. Another key factor for affordable housing was the establishment of the Vienna Land Distribution and Urban Renewal Fund in 1984 to provide land for state-subsidized housing construction and to supervise the renovation of old houses. As a non-profit organization, Von von Wien, as it is called today, coordinates property developers, house owners, municipal departments and service centers of the municipality of Vienna. Because of its land reserves and long-term planning, Von von Wien is still able to buy agricultural or brownfield land at good rates despite the increasing price of land. Recent years have seen land and real estate prices in many European cities spiraling out of control. To counteract this development, the city of Vienna amended its building code in November 2018 by introducing the subsidized housing zoning category. If land is thus classified as belonging to a subsidized housing zone, two-thirds of the usable floor space created for housing purposes must be taken up by subsidized dwellings. This caps rents and safeguards that affordable homes will continue to be constructed across the entire city and again ensures a good social mix all over Vienna. All these measures provide for an adequate supply of good housing in Vienna as well as the rest of Austria. Last but not Is there a cadre or am I too American to think this is something that can happen without weird consequences? What co The consequence that's weird is that everyone has some level of housing, okay? Mo like almost every single person has adequate housing at that point. That It is a weird consequence if you're used to, you know, living in fucking filth as the system just constantly fucks you over. That, it, it is weird. It's, it's unimaginable if you're American, especially. Not least, these benefits contribute to Vienna being continually voted the city with the highest standard of living in the world. How is rent subsidized? I don't know, dog. What do you think taxes do? Like, people always are like, how are we going to pay for it? It's like, bro, you already pay for shit. It's just the American government decides to, to use your uh, payments for a never-ending war machine, okay? And, and subsidies for mega corporations. We privatize everything. Vienna was ranked as the most livable city worldwide 10 times in a row. This includes quality of living ranking 2019 by Mercer, as well as being classified as the best place to live worldwide by the Global Livability Index 2019 through The Economist. In comparison with other big cities, Vienna has rather moderate rent prices. To maintain this, even in times when the housing market is under great pressure due to the financial markets and the ever-increasing population, the city administration invests, as mentioned, annually roughly 400 million euros in housing construction and renovation of older buildings. With this funding budget, around 7,000 good quality, affordable apartments are built every year and over 5,000 apartments refurbished on average. Nowadays, the benchmark rent for a well-equipped municipal apartment is €5.81 per square metre.
Looked up some of the private housing protected by Vienna's policies. And even there, like $410 a month, utilities included, and that's private. Yeah, because when your housing market prices are dictated by affordable public housing, private housing owners and people who want to rent, people who want to become landlords, are going to have a much harder fucking time because the government has set the pricing that way. That's why people always talk about how they don't want the government to interfere with business. Okay, why do you think they're always like, yo, don't let the government interfere in business, brother. The free market needs to do shit. Uh, competition needs to thrive. The real reason why they don't want the government to interfere is because the government is always going to outcompete. The government is always going to fucking put the price, uh, put the price ceiling at such a low point that all these private businesses and their profit margins are going to get fucking eviscerated and they can suck my cock, especially when we're talking about a commodity that is a necessity for survival. Excluding taxes and operating costs, the benchmark rent for a subsidized apartment is nearly the same. When we study how people live, we can determine that Vienna is a city of tenants. Over three quarters of Vienna's population rent accommodation, with only around 20% living in flats or houses that they own. There are mainly two forms of affordable housing in Vienna the municipal housing apartments owned by the city of Vienna and the non-profit residential construction buildings owned and operated by non or limited profit cooperatives or associations. Already since the 1950s, parallel to the social housing construction of the Viennese municipality, non-profit housing construction has been making a considerable contribution to apartment production. Responsible for the building management of the Viennese municipal housing complexes is Wiener Wohnen, Vienna's municipal housing company. With 4,000 employees, Wiener Wohnen is Europe's largest manager of municipal properties. Altogether, Wiener Wohnen looks after 1,800 housing complexes containing 220,000 apartments, more than 5,000 business premises or doctor's practices and nearly 50,000 garages and outdoor parking spots. And although the city of Vienna recently decided to build another 4,000 new municipal housing units, most efforts have been made since the early 2000s to promote the concept of subsidized housing. This program is supported by non or limited profit construction associations, which are responsible for building, renovating and administrating apartments for the benefit of the general public. These must be approved by the federal state government as charitable. Such building associations belong to a federation watchdog which regularly reviews their business activities. Non-profit building associations predominantly build dwellings that are subsidized according to the Housing Development Acts of the provinces. Therefore, for the rental purchase of an apartment, the funding provisions must be complied with. To ensure that the quality of affordable housing in Vienna fulfills the highest quality standards, Vienna has a detailed planning process, including rigorous competitions for selecting developers and architects. This is called the Four Pillars process. Only those projects which provide the highest standards in the fields of economy, ecology, architecture and social sustainability will be selected by an interdisciplinary panel of experts. For housing construction projects with a volume of at least 500 subsidized dwellings, developer competitions are mandatory. Smaller projects are evaluated by the Land Advisory Board. Chat, about to become fluent in German. You might want to brush up so you can be a German streamer. Yeah, we're moving to Österreich. Board, which is also a part of all four V. It's just, it is kind of funny to consider that like a fucking European country, like in this current day and age, has policies that literally seem unimaginable for America. Like, Americans look at this and go, that's utopian communism. You look to, you look to fucking, uh, I don't know, half of the European social democracies and, your, and their healthcare system, their public education system is so well-funded and operates so well, and you think, that is utopian communism. None of this is, by the way, but do, you know what I mean? Like, we are living in such dire circumstances here in the wealthiest nation on earth that, like, 
Other countries have been able to manage all this shit, and we look at that and go, nah, nah, dude, that's crazy. That will not happen. You're, you're fucking bullshit. That would never happen, dude. Both systems use similar criteria to determine eligibility for housing. You have to have a minimum age of 18. They literally kept this going because they were scared of the socialism in the 20th century after World War II. Yes, the USSR's, perhaps the USSR's single most important contribution to humanity, aside from eviscerating the Nazi scourge, of course, was that its existence galvanized trade unionists, socialists, communists in all of these other Western nations that... Um, that, that created a system, a mechanism of fear that led capitalists to concede. The only reason why so many of these countries have health care, so many of these countries have like viable and robust union systems, the only reason why these countries have public transit and all of these amenities that are impossible, uh, that, see, that are seemingly like uh, just, you know, a, a, a fucking unicorn or, or, or a dream in America is because capital owners and capitalists in general were terrified of a, a communist revolution or a communist takeover or a trade unionist takeover and therefore conceded. The last time this happened in America is what when we got the New Deal, okay, under FDR. Same forces, similar forces of pressure created a system in an environment where even a social democrat or a, a um, you know, uh, relatively open-minded leader who was terrified of those, uh, who was terrified of those formations coming in and seizing power and seizing control, decided to, um, decided to basically uh, concede and and cave and give in to those desires, those pressures. Maximum monthly income must not be more than three thousand four hundred and ten euros after tax with a single person. 5,080 euros and 71 cents for a two-person household and 5,750 euros for a three-person household. These relatively high income limits, 75% of the Viennese population earn less, provide that the middle class also has access to Vienna's subsidized housing. Everybody who wants to rent public housing must have lived in Vienna for at least two years. You have to be an Austrian citizen come from a member state of the European Union, or have an equivalent status. To get one of the municipal housing flats, or a smart apartment, or a subsidized apartment with a procuration fee under 10,000 euros, you also have to fulfill socially oriented allocation criteria. The long-standing history of affordable housing in Vienna and the ongoing political will and practice that maintains it makes Vienna a great place to live. Constantly providing its residents with affordable homes needs constant commitment and a wealth of action. As in the past, this action will ensure future generations have access to high quality, affordable apartments. Imagine actually investing the colonialism money into the poor. I mean, that's what Europe did. You know what I mean? A lot of Europe did. <laughs> a lot of like European development hinges on quite literally that. You know what I mean? Except Britain. No, Britain did that too. What do you mean? They got the NHS and shit. Come on. Uh, anyway, imagine being single making 3400 a month with like 500 rent for housing. That will be privatized very soon. Don't say that. Don't say that.